are once again. We are currently in Watson Lake, Yukon. Made it to Yukon, which is wonderful. We are at the downtown RV park and we are gonna charge at the fast charger across the street. That's a flow station. Long story short, it does not charge Rivians. Uh, that's a whole different thing. Maybe I'll make a video on that, but that's not what this one's for. The uh, Rivian crew actually came up here trying to do the same thing we are and couldn't make it. They came here and the owner of this place, his name is Archie, uh, quirky guy, friendly guy, I like him. Uh, he seems to know a lot about electricity. He used to work on submarines and such. And he said, I'll set you up. I set up the other Rivian guys. He said, we're about the seventh one up here. That's pretty exciting. And we've been charging now at uh, RV parks using this guy, the TT30 plug, a couple times here. And we've heard about this guy uh, a few times from different people, but they're hard to get. We're on the road, it's hard to ship us anything. And so he said, oh, I'll set you up, don't worry. So we have our original charger, which we've shown before, and then he provided this. I've heard it called a few different things, but I'll call it a, uh, a pigtail. And then it comes with this also adapter. So this is a 120 volt TT30 adapter onto one side of the pigtail. I believe you can get two TT30 plugs, but that's not what we have at this point. So that's now two, two, two 30 amp plugs. One of them goes into one side. Another, he also grabbed us this extension cord, TT30. The other plugs into the other side. Both of those plug in to here, which goes to a NEMA 1450 plug. The NEMA 1450 plug plugs into our charger. And now you're running essentially a 50 amp charger off of two 120 volts. So uh, that took us from approximately nine kilometers an hour running one plug off of a 30 amp breaker to upwards of 30 kilometers an hour we got last night. So that translates from having to park at uh, a park for say two or three days to be able to top all the way up to we got in last night around uh, three, four o'clock and the car charge finished off at about 7.30 this morning, full top up. So that sped things up like crazy. Uh, he gave us a pretty good deal on it. Felt bad for us, I think, which is great. We'll take it. And yeah, this means that across Canada, we can essentially go to any RV park, uh, assuming that we have uh, you know enough outlets that are available and plug in as if we were plugging at home charge overnight, end up with a 100% charge rather than say a 60% charge. For example, we're going today for another three hour trek and a 60% charge just wouldn't do it. We'd still be plugged in hoping for, you know, those extra few extra kilometers just to be able to get there. But this way, 100% takes a lot of load off. Uh, if only fast charger over there worked, we wouldn't be in this mess, but at the same time, we wouldn't have this guy at this point. So, you know, it runs for cost of maybe two or three nights at a hotel. But we're at an RV park, pulling power. We got our own rooftop tent and everything. So we're saving money regardless. And yeah, now we're set up to pretty well go to Labrador and back wherever there's RV parks and be able to get that full charge and continue on our way. Here we are in Teslin, Yukon and another fast charger here and we're getting the same issue as we did last time the charger wakes up goes up to about 100 kilowatts so it says and then times out it says stopped by vehicle as we thought it would so there's a another rv park right across the road and they have 30 amp plugs and uh we're gonna go have a chat with him. Here we are in Teslin, Yukon. That's the Teslin Lake right there. Apparently it's bigger <laughs> than the Okanagan. It's a big lake. Yeah, it's huge. And there's a whole giant uh, delta nature area 
upstream this way that uh, you can either boat in or helicopter in to see. We're not going to be doing that this time. <laughs> not this time. But we're camping at this uh, RV park because we can't use the fast charger in town. Yep, same thing as in uh, Watson Lake. Uh, it's a 50 kilowatt station and it sounds like it's just too old to have gotten the necessary updates to run a Rivian. I'm gonna guess that. There's a lot of different reasons for it, but that's kind of my guess, uh, which is fine. It means we had to stay here at this RV campground and meet some great people, have a little bit of a jam session. Yeah. That was great. We brought some drumsticks and uh, just uh, empty bottles. You can smack them and we became the percussion section yep. for these uh, lovely folks from Fairbanks, Alaska. They're on their way back up after being in Portland, Oregon all winter. Uh, yeah, it's so cool to meet them. They had an awesome dog. And uh, we're, yeah, just charging up. We should be uh, able to get to Whitehorse tomorrow. And try one of those fast chargers, which is the <laughs> same brand and same kind as the ones that haven't worked the last two days. But there's check-ins on PlugShare that say those have charged Rivians lately. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that's still the case because uh, it takes a long time to charge up on 30 amps. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, we're getting about nine kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. And so we came into town with how much? 15%, I think. So it was about 150 kilometers, give or take. I think we had 35% getting in here. That was oh, yesterday yeah. we had 15. That's right, 35. And there's giant mosquitoes. Whoa, look at that guy. Oh, oh my gosh. Crazy. Giant, crazy mosquitoes here. So we're going to probably cut this one short because we got to run away from this mosquito. Huh? Okay, bye. This is moments after our last video. <laughs> we escaped the mosquito. <laughs> and it's currently 11.03 Pacific Standard Time. That's the moon as if it was night, because it is. Mm -hmm. They're building a new bridge over there, which is pretty gnarly. That's a boat, which is pretty gnarly. And that's like the sunset at 11 o'clock. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Which is pretty out gnarly. We to the dock here, standing out on this gorgeous lake. And what a, what a treat to have all this beautiful fire in the sky to admire. Yeah, it's pretty good when you get to admire it with that, too. <laughs> anyway, now that the mosquito's gone, we wanted to tell you what time it was. 11.05 p.m. Yeah, we might be able to make it to as north enough to see the midnight sun, where it doesn't set at all. It goes around in a circle. It's so not sky. too far. We got a tripod. <laughs> we could do it. Yeah, we're almost uh, north enough for that, but not quite. So we have to time out things because there's a, an event in Prince George that we want to go to. Um, when is that, Richard? That's on June 13th? June 13th. Yeah, so if you're in Prince George on June 13th, there is an EV event. Yeah, put on by the basically the Northern Electric Vehicle Association, and it's their monthly meetup. And yeah. Uh, Information's online. We Look plan up. to be there. Prince George EV Associates. <laughs> From there, we're uh, headed down to Kelowna uh, area, Okanagan area, for an event called the Eco Run. Then on to Father's Day car show in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And then a whole bunch of stuff lined up for the rest of the year. Yeah, so we got a schedule to keep to. So hopefully, we'll be able to try to get some of these fast chargers coming up. Uh, which will allow us to go a little farther, but we'll see. I think we can get to Alaska just to say we did, but stay tuned. Bye.